Someday there's going to be somebody next to you you don't know. And you're going to smile at them, and they're going to smile back, and you're going to make their day. All right, shake hands for a second so I can find what I'm supposed to have. Ah! <laughs> this one sounds terrible. Now we're here. Sure. I didn't have that in my mouth. Confirmation of what you asked for. 
Jesus said, you receive not because you ask not. Actually, Jesus didn't say that, but I think Paul wrote it. Um, you, you receive not because you ask not. The principle is that sometimes we don't receive because we don't ask. Prayer, if you develop a prayer life, you will always be in communication. I know when my wife's hungry. We talk all the time. You know how many times we stop on a six-hour journey? Nah, it's not always her. It's not always her. Prayer is that sign in your life. It's that moment. It's that time that you've set aside. It's a, a specific, intended, intentional time that you know you're going to talk to God. If you'll do it with repetitiveness, which means you turn it into a habit. Some people say habits are bad. No, a prayer habit is awesome. Amen. Daniel prayed three times a day. It didn't matter what day. It doesn't specify. It says he prayed three times a day. Which day? It's every day. He prayed three times a day. When you learn to pray. Now look, some of you may not have to pray that much. You're just that spiritual. But some of us need to pray a lot. I fall into that category. The sign of a mature Christian is not how much money they have in the bank. It's not how powerful their, uh, their demonstration in the Spirit is. It, it, it Really, the sign of a mature Christian is how much he prays. And you know who measures that? God. I can't measure your prayer life. You come to church service and I see you. What, two hours a week, three hours at the most? There's no way to be, to gauge. I can only go off by what you say. Are you, did, did you pray about it? You come to the pastor, hey, I need help with this. But did you pray about it? Yeah, I prayed. Well, I don't know if you did or didn't. That's between you and God. But if, if you learn to develop your prayer life, you won't come to the pastor very often. My pastor used to tell me, Matt, if you pray about it first, me and you would have less conversations. I'm like, okay. So I learned to start praying. And you know what I found out? If I learn to pray and then wait, God will speak by showing me what to do. You know, with me? Yes. I, I put most of this in the a newer version, so it's not in the King James. It would be very simple for you to follow. But 1 Timothy 2 and 1. First of all, I encourage you to make petitions, prayers, intercessions, and prayers of thanks for all people, for rulers, and for everyone who has authority over us. Pray for these people so that we can have a quiet and peaceful life, always live in a godly and reverent way. This is good and pleasing God our Savior. This is good and pleasing God our Savior. Prayer is the first thing that we must learn to make a habit in our life before we start any journey for the Lord. Right. Don't say I want to preach or I want to be a missionary. I, I, I want to start winning souls. I'm, you can you can name all these things you want to do, but if prayer is not behind it, you will not be successful. To be able to minister to people, you have to hear from God. To hear from God, you have to pray. Right. I'm not saying a pastor. I'm not, I'm not just saying Brother Monroe, pastor. I'm saying a saint of God, a child of God, cannot minister to somebody else until he has communicated with God. You can quote them the Bible. I've done it. I've, I've told people the Bible and, you know, it just bounced off their head. But then I've had Mormons. I knew they were going to come over. I prayed, 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 read my Bible. One time I even fasted. Oh, we had it. I mean, like, I was like, wow, okay, prayer's the difference. Because when I'm in a relationship with God, it's not always me speaking. It's that spirit that's in me begins to put scriptures together, put thoughts together. I, it organizes it for me. Instead of me being nervous, I, I don't know about you, but sometimes I get on that spiritual roll when, I, when I've prayed about it. I know, God, I've got I to gotta deal with this. i got to deal with this. Help me. Give me wisdom. Give me understanding. And then I insert myself in it. I start to minister and start to talk. The words begin to pour out. The thought begins to come. It's clear. The person receives it. Now, what, what they do with it is up to them. But I deliver the message. Why? Because I had prayer with God. What is prayer? I'll tell you what prayer ain't. You want to know what prayer ain't? Matthew 6 and 5. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, 
though that they may be seen by men, truly I say to you, they have their reward. You know what Jesus was saying? You can't just talk about prayer. You can't just... Prayer is a revealer of things. The more I talk with God and pray with God, the more I spend... I, I mean, there's rarely a time in the morning that I pray with God that I don't cry. I was bawling this morning. I, I'm not saying I'm spiritual. I'm not saying there's something better about Brother Monroe than, than somebody else. I'm telling you, when you start talking to God, He, he reinforces ideas. He puts thoughts in your heart and your mind through His Word. He begins to speak to you about things in your life. Sometimes it's just little things. He don't expect you to change the world overnight, but sometimes it's just a little nudge. You know, you, you need to go see so-and-so. Or maybe you need to give a little more. Maybe you need to uh, reach outside the world and, and talk to somebody about me. Just little things. But you know what he's doing? He's, he's teaching me to listen to what he says when I'm praying. I'll tell you what prayer is. Prayer is not just talking. Oh God, I need help today. My daughter's backslid. My son's in trouble. I need money. I need a car. I need, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need. Thank you. That's not prayer. If I spoke to my wife like that, we wouldn't have much of a marriage. Prayer is an interaction. Prayer is getting on your knees and humbling yourself. We're going to go through that in a minute. Prayer is humbling yourself before God and learning to communicate. James 4 and 3 says, You ask and you receive not because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lusts. I put that in there because I, I, have, to, I have to say this. My prayers, when I first started praying, it was always about me. Lord, God, I need a blessing. Man, touch me on my job. Those aren't bad things. Those aren't bad things. Prayer is good. I'm praying about good things. But I realized it was me, 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 me. Are we going to insert anybody else in this conversation? The first verse I read right here, it said, first of all, I encourage you to make petitions, prayers, intercessions, and prayers of thanks for all people. Well, he didn't even mention me in that. That was for everybody else. First of all, I encourage you to make petition prayers. That's First uh, Timothy 2 and 1. So our focus can't always be me. When you learn to pray, you realize, I must learn to pray for others. I must learn to pray for things that pertain to other people's lives. Let me get outside of my own selfish desires and and, and you know what? When you start to pray for somebody and God gives you a word for somebody, I have laid on my floor weeping for people in this church. I'm not even sure what it was all about, but I was there weeping and speaking in tongues and talking to God. And when I got done, I felt a release and I thought, God has done it one way or the other. I, I did my part. I prayed. I've heard from God. Now I'm at peace. When you pray, you have to learn to stop Every once in a while. Um, I am a talker. Anybody a talker? Okay, I'll get you on three cups of that Starbucks coffee, brother. We can get back to like, woo, 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 woo. When we find out where to get the words in. <laughs> My wife always says, no coffee for you. When people come over, no coffee for you. I'm naturally a talker, but you get me on a cup of Jack, and I'm like, woo, 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 woo. So I usually have a cup of coffee in the morning to wake up. And then I go into prayer. And you know what I had to realize to do? And then we you to Jesus. I need to live. You know what I mean? I'm like, God's like, slow down. Wait, wait, wait. So I was praying one morning. And I just felt this, just stop. Okay. And I just was quiet for a minute. I didn't hear nothing. But you know what? I just stopped. I felt God telling me to sell yourself down. If I could speak, I wouldn't get a word in edgewise. I've got the answer, but you won't close your mouth long enough for me to tell you. See, prayer is a conversation. And it takes a while to develop a prayer life where you learn to conversate with God. Sometimes I, I, I'll, I'll say what i got to say, and then I just put my head on the floor and my hands out, and I just thank Him. And then sometimes I just sit there quiet. And you know what I'm trying to do? 
I'm trying to do like Paul said, bring every thought into captivity. I'm trying to clear my mind. Some people call it meditation. I don't want to get all Eastern on you, but sometimes you just need to clear your mind of every thought and everything that's rattling around in there and just get your mind clear and calm. And you might hear a still, small voice of God and He may just say one thing. And I'm telling you what, I'm learning. I'm not saying it here all the time, but I'm learning to be sensitive to that voice. To calm myself. Wait. This is a conversation. Give God an opportunity to talk. So, here's some, uh, some guidelines for you for prayer. Matthew 6 and 6. But when you pray, enter into your room and shut the door. Pray to your Father in secret, and your Father who is sees in secret shall reward you openly. So, biggest thing here. The Lord said, enter into your room and shut the door. I'll tell you why I pray in the morning. She don't like to get up. And I don't mess with her. I shut the door. I creep to the coffee pot. I go to the cup of coffee. I go in my prayer room. I shut the door. And you know what? There's no distractions. There's nothing to get my attention. There's no noise. It's just me and Jesus. And sometimes it's a little, you feel almost naked before God because when, when, you're, when you walk into God's presence, there's nothing hid from the Lord. Don't think you'll have an agenda if you have a prayer life. Because when you go into, into the presence of the Almighty, you will humble yourself before Him. And you will learn to hear what He has to say. And I promise you what He has to say is more important than anything you have to say. He can fix my life in a few short minutes. I had a terrible situation. And I don't want to talk too close about it because y'all know it. I had this terrible situation. And it was bothering me and bothering me and bothering me. And I kept praying and kept praying. Nothing happened. It went on for a long time. I finally went to the prayer room and I said, Lord, I need help. I need you to deal with this. And I just laid there. That was it. And I felt something in my spirit just say, just wait. And I laid there. It was probably 30 minutes. I couldn't tell you. But I laid there. And then I felt a release. And in 30 days, it was gone. I could set my watch to it. Matter of fact, it was only the next day that I found out that in 30 days, it was going to be gone. And I looked up to heaven and I said, my God, I don't know how. I'm not even sure how this would work out. But he did it. I had to learn to separate myself unto Jesus. The Bible says that he would often go up into the mountains and he would take his disciples and he would, he would get into a place of mountain of transfiguration which is him and a couple of disciples. And, and he was in a place of meditation and prayer. There was a separation. I'll tell you what prayer does. It will teach you to separate yourself from all your junk. I got junk. I got a job. That's the only thing I'm going to name. I got a job. There's other stuff that struggle with. I got a job. And sometimes the only way I can get my spirit right, because when you pray, you can't go in with a preconceived idea. You can't go in angry. You can't go in mad. You may go in that way, but you won't hear from God. You won't, you won't be able to humble yourself. If you go in upset, you can so you have to learn to cordon off your life, not just physically. But emotionally, mentally, I can't be angry and pray for you. I can't be bitter at you and pray for you. You won't love somebody that you feel like you hate. And I can't go before God and talk to Him about our problem if I'm upset with you. Somewhere I have to settle this in my mind. The Bible says, before you bring your gift to the altar, you better go back and make it right. Leave the gift. Don't make it right. Then come back and offer the gift. Because he ain't going to take it if you're upset about it. Right. So when you go into the prayer room, this has got to be lined up with him to hear what you've got to hear from God. You need to learn to separate some things. I've often gone.
down and pray with my wife early in the morning. Not because we were having a problem, not because I was mad at her. But I found that moment where I was in the, in the spirit, in the room praying, and there was a closeness, and I felt connected with God. And I thought, oh, oh, this is the time to pray for people. My spirit is open. I've emptied myself before God. I'm going to get you another thing here. Emptied myself before God. Remind me to say empty. I'll never bring back the thought. Emptied myself before God. And when I went in to pray with my wife, there was such a purity and a holiness. I could lay my hand on her and love on her. Think, oh, God, bless my wife. Touch her. Give her strength. Touch her mind. God, put a hedge about her. You can pray so good when you've got this all cleaned out. Sometimes we may have to do that with a child. You might have to get yourself right in the prayer room and then get them early in the morning while they're still snoozing. You'd scare the death out of them if you laid hands on them and busted out their tongues. They lay there in the bed, my God, Jesus, come on. What's wrong with dad? Or mom? When you're right with God, it's because you've emptied yourself out. When you learn to pray in a manner that you clear everything out. What are you saying, brother? I'll, I'll tell you. We always have some little kingdom, that's my pastor used to say, there's some little kingdom in our heart that we will not surrender. We pray around it. We pray beside it. We'll pray over it. We'll even pray under it, but we won't mention it. Because you know what the answer is going to be. How many know that we don't pray about things that we want to do? When we know God don't want us to do it. Mm -hmm. Was that a hand? No, he's got itch. I'm telling you, we don't pray about things we want to do when we know God don't want us to do it. So, when you go into prayer and you have something like that hanging out, God ain't hearing you. You're wasting your time. Because God wants you open to Him. You have to clear out all the junk. You have to unpack all the anger, all the bitterness. You say, Brother Bruno, how do I do that? I will tell you how. First, you start finding places in your life where there is frustration and anger. And that's where you start. My sister drives me nuts. Well, you better call on the phone and get it right. Well, I'm struggling with this guy at work. Get it right. Well, I like this certain TV program. And, and uh, Cecil has a great testament. I'm going to tell him about that sometime. I, I got this certain show I watch, and I just don't really feel that good about it after I watch it, but I really like the show. Well, there's things you're putting in there that are not acceptable to God in prayer. And the reason you go in to pray and you don't feel anything, it feels like a hollow shell, or you're just mumbling words, or there's no time. There, I'm here, but God's not here. It's not that God don't want to get there, but you got so much junk in the way, you're not empty. You have to go to Him empty. And then when you go to Him empty, He fills you up. Prayer is not always you asking. Prayer has to also be worship. Sometimes it's just thinking. I, have, I come in in the morning and, and just popped into my head thankfulness. Just pop on. Okay, I'm done with that today. And I just laid there on the floor thanking him for everything. I didn't ask one thing. Not one. I didn't even ask for him to help me to be thankful. Because that would be asking something. Is that silly, brother? No, no, it's not. It's teaching you how to pray. If you do a ritual of prayer, say the same thing, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's a great outline. And I pray that prayer. I pray like that. But that can't be your habit. Go into prayer. I pray to it. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. No, you just re re repeated something. Right. Right. Prayer is communication. You need to change up your prayer life until you get in a relationship with God that prayer becomes real. Let me tell you something. When, when I first started talking, I didn't know what to say. She pretty, I didn't know what to say. How many know it's hard talking to a pretty woman? Come on now. Oh, I know, see, you got it. <laughs> me? I, I, man, I'm like, okay, my name's Fred. I mean, Jeff. I mean, Joe. I mean, Matt. It's Matt, I think. <laughs> Y'all nervous? Hey, go, go say hi. I can't do that. That's how we are with God. We don't know him. We know about him. 
We hear about him. We talk about him. But do we ever talk to him? And, and starting a prayer life is it's tough. It's, it's hard because you don't know how. You get in there and I don't know what to pray about. Friend, make a list. The, the, the Lord's Prayer is, is the disciples who are with Jesus for three years are with Jesus and, and they hear Him praying and then they say, wow, He prays. We don't. Lord, teach us to pray. The disciples, yes, Peter, James, John, Andrew, they asked the Lord, teach us to pray. Jesus gave them a format, not a, not a script, a format. Pray on this wise. Our Father, which art in heaven. Well, there's only one God in heaven, so we got that right. Hallowed be thy name, my Lord, your name is holy. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Lord, whatever it is that you want done. I go through this little format that gets me right with God. So when I begin to pray, I begin to open up. And friend, I've told you this a million times. I started with just praying five minutes and I kept checking my clock. Oh my gosh, that was only 30 seconds. Oh. And then it, I, I stopped. I put the watch away. I had my phone. It was at the time I just put it down and I just began to pray. And I, and I, I started, I, you prayed the Lord's Prayer. But then I, as I prayed, I was realizing that there's things that I need to work on in my prayer life to help me develop prayer with God, communication with God. And the more I did, the more I realized, hey, there's something powerful about this. There's something powerful about this. So, this morning I prayed. I'm just giving you an example. I don't want to use any of you for an example, so I'm using me, okay? Doesn't make me better, just I'm using me for an example. I got up really early. I get up really early. I about 5.15. I thought, man, I'm going to get to work early. I'm just getting in there and pray. Brush my teeth because I don't like my own bread, bad, bad, bad breath. And I uh, knelt down and I started praying. And, and the more I've learned to pray, it seems like I don't have enough time to pray. I prayed for 45 minutes. And then I got up and prayed for her for a few minutes. When you learn to pray, it's like being in love. Time just flies by. But it takes effort and work on your part to talk to him, to condition yourself, to learn, to, to, to pay attention, to listen every once in a while. Conversations are two ways. Sometimes you have to learn to slow down and just listen to what he's saying. You say, well, God, don't speak to me. Maybe God does speak to you, but you just don't know what you're hearing. Prayer is the building blocks of a Christian life. You want a great relationship with God? Learn to pray. Prayer. This is how prayer works. It's like putting food away. But I got plenty of food. I know. But I'm putting food away. Why? Because someday I'm going to need it. How many put money in their savings? Don't show me. I put a little money in my savings. Not much. Then I usually take it out. But I try to put more in than I take. Why am I putting money in the savings? Because I may need it. Prayer is like this. You pray, pray, pray. Well, I, I, I don't have any needs. That's great. You're awesome. I love you. Tell me how you're doing. I got needs. You're putting it away, putting it away, putting it away. And then all of a sudden you find out that someone in your family is sick and you've got to go pray for them. Friend, the last thing you want to do is have to try to get into a spirit of prayer. Anybody ask you to pray, and you're like, oh man, they asked me to pray. You know, we're at the dinner table, everybody throws the fingers up first. You know why? They don't want to be the one to pray. You ever been asked to pray for church service? You're like, oh God, I just got to say a paragraph, and I can't even do that. You know why? Because you're not in prayer. But when you learn to pray, you learn to meditate. I, I've learned that I can talk to God anytime. I can be in the car. I can be, I can be anywhere. I was at the hospital the other day and uh, walked up to this young lady and she said, hey, pray for me. I said, whoop. I was praying before I came in. Hot dog. Jesus. The young black guy. Jesus. I pray 
right now, a miracle in our life. Touch her. And I went on and on and on. She's like, woo! Prayer, life, teaches you to be in prayer all the time. So you don't have to warm up to prayer. You don't have to get into prayer. You don't have to worship for 30 minutes to be able to do something in the Spirit. You don't have to come to church for four hours so you can go pray for somebody for two minutes. You learn to pray. You're instant. I pull on that power out. Jesus, I was just talked to you a minute ago. And this lady right here needs to heal her. I need to touch her right now. You need to heal her. You say, that's pretty bold. It is because I've been in the throne room. And when I get in the throne room, it's boldness. I, I start talking to God and he starts talking to me. I'm not ashamed of him and he's not ashamed of me. I learned to love him and he loves me. Why wouldn't I call him? I've got all the power of heaven. Just call him the name. Jesus. You know where that came from? Prayer. His disciples, and I'm closing my place on it. That was 30 minutes. His disciples were trying to pray for this kid, young man. He's got something wrong with him. And uh, they pray for him, pray for him, pray for him. The dad grabs the kid after a while and says, Heck, forget it. You guys aren't getting it done. Takes him over to Jesus. He says, I disciples to pray for him. Then the disciples come over and they say, hey, we pray, nothing happened. Jesus looked at them and he said this, O ye of little faith. He looked at the boy, touched him, healed him, he's fine. Dad goes home with his healed son, they're all happy. Jesus said, there. The disciples come up and said, Lord, what in the world is going on? We did everything. We did just like you told us to, nothing happened. We laid hands on him. We made some clay out of spit. We did all these things and nothing happened. What, what happened? You know what Jesus answered? This only comes out by much prayer and fasting. There are some things in your life that God's put in your life that you're wondering how you're going to get out. I'm telling you, it's a magic silver bullet. Pray about it. Don't stop praying about it. Continue to pray about it. Pray about it until God either answers you or fixes it. Paul said, I besought the Lord three times. You know what? Paul was a prayer warrior. He besought the Lord three times. The third time the Lord told him, hey, my grace is sufficient for thee. You know what Paul said? Well, it's good enough for me too. I'll just go around with whatever this is bugging me. You know where he got that answer? In prayer. In prayer. When you learn to pray, you're developing your spiritual life. You're developing your, your communication with God. You're opening yourself up in the spirit world. A carnal mind cannot understand the spiritual things of God. Faith comes through prayer. You know why? Because I prayed about things and God went and did them. And now I believe that He can do them. And now my faith is built up because I prayed and He did it. So next time I know, well, something happened. I'm going to pray. Why? Because God always answers me when I pray. Faith is built by prayer. Strong prayer life, much faith. Much faith, great results. Let's stand. Well, that was a good exercise. Prayer. I beg this church. 2020 is going to be different, I'm telling you. We don't pray like we should. I feel awful because I'm the leader of the church. And before service, I just kind of get up here and mumble through things. God's been dealing with me about that. And I thought, well, they're all new and they don't know how to pray. And I don't want to get up here and just not ball and cry for 30 minutes before church and then try to read a visit. Hey, wait a minute. Then I must be trying to do this church in my own strength, in my own way. I need to pray. If I fail anybody in this church, I failed you in prayer. This needs to be a praying church. It doesn't matter how strong, how much money, how much time, how much talent. If we don't pray, we'll never be effective in the kingdom of God. Because this is not a carnal mission. This is a spiritual mission. This is not a fleshly mission dealing with flesh. This is a spiritual mission. We're on our way to heaven. And prayer is the only thing that will change your nature. We are going to be a praying church. I promise you in 2020, we are going to be a praying church. I always, me and my wife always, man, we need to worship more. We need more worship. How many like to worship? I do. 
I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little exuberant in worship. I mean, I will cut a rug and roll around on the floor. Not anymore, but I did. You know, the only way you're going to get that close to God is learn to pray. Because that's the only time you're going to be comfortable to raise your hands. Prayer gets you in a relationship with God. And after a while, I don't care who's watching me. I don't care what you're doing. I am in tune with my God. He's in this house. And I am going to praise. And when that kind of praise comes out of you, God fills you up. You walk out of here. I've seen Cecil. He, God touched him. He's over there bawling, squalling. Afterward, it, bro, isn't it the most awesome feeling when you leave church and God has moved on you? Thank you, Brother. Brother Anthony, when God moves on your spirit and you walk out the back door, man, I've been touched by the Holy Ghost. There's nothing better. We've got to have God. We've got to have Him in this house. He's got to be working. We have to learn to pray. Yes. I'm not going any more into this without prayer. Prayer first. Prayer first. I need to hear from Him and I need to talk to Him about everything. Everything. Amen. Okay, yes, Pastor, we will fire. But it's good, right? Man, you wouldn't want me on cold. Prayer, 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 prayer. That's all Jesus talked about. Prayer, prayer, prayer. The Old Testament the prophet wrote, If my people, which are called by name, by my name, will humble themselves and pray, 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 then I will hear from heaven. And I will heal their prayer, prayer, prayer. We're not doing enough of it. I, I'm not saying you're not. I'm not saying you're not. I know we need more prayer in this church, and we're going to have 2020 is going to be our year. Raise your hand, but we need everybody raise your hand. Okay, 2020 is our year. We are going to go for it. God's going to open doors. God is going to, but we're going to do it in His name. We're going to do it through prayer, and we're going to do it for His glory. I don't care about the building. I was praying last week, and I'm too focused on this building. I am just too focused. It needs to be nice. We need to have room. We need Sunday school. We may have to build something over there. It's not a building. That's not the church. We are the church. It don't matter if we're meeting at a school down the street. When we get together, we're the church. Right. We're going to have Anderson at the flea market down the street. We're the church. We're the children of God. It doesn't matter. This is just a nice building that God gave us to gather in. We're going to build the church. Yeah. And He'll give us a building to have the church in. Right. Amen. Amen. Take a few minutes, shake hands, love on one another. Let's just raise our hands real quick and thank Him for His goodness. Jesus, I thank you for your mercy, your protection today, your many blessings that are upon my life. You've kept me, you've held my hand, you've walked before me, you've provided in such a powerful way. You've healed my body and my mind. You've given me direction. God, there's so many things I could spend the rest of the night telling about all the wonderful things you have done for me. I am thankful, my King, that you know my name. I'm thankful, my King, that I can feel your presence. I give you honor and glory and praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's clap the Lord.